Hi, I'm Bob from Crane Appliance. Since 1983, as a family-owned company, our goal has been simple, to give our neighbors of the Cape and Islands a great shopping experience. Rest easy knowing our professional team will listen to your needs and help you pick out the perfect appliances. We'll take care of everything throughout the sales, delivery, and installation process. And we even have our own in-house service department. Crane Appliance, we call the Cape and Islands home. Hosting services for FCTV.org are provided by Meganet Communications. Meganet offers a wide array of internet services, including Mega Backup Cloud Service, Server Colocation, T1, Fiber, Metro Ethernet, as well as telephone services such as Hosted PBX and Digital Voice. Their number one goal is to keep your communications network up and running and allow you to focus on growing your business. 877-634-2638 or meganet.net. Good evening. I would like to call to order the meeting of the Falmouth Select Board. It is Monday, uh, April 1st, 2024, and it is 6.30 p.m. I would ask each of you to silence your cell phones, please, and please check to make sure that they are silent. And I would ask that if anyone is audio or video recording this meeting, if they would let me know as the chair. Thank you. Um, and your equipment should not interfere with the con the conducting of this meeting. Um, I would ask you to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clearly not far. <coughs> Okay, we do have a proclamation tonight, and I'm going to ask Mr. Brown if he would please read it for me, and then we will hear from um, Mr. Jeremiah Pearson. Mr. Brown. Pro proclamation in recognition of Arbor Day. Proclamation, whereas the town of Falmouth benefits from the graceful canopy of Pearson <coughs> that shade us from the blazing summer sun, purify our air of contaminants, provide a peaceful respite from the ordinary world, and generally beautify our community. And whereas the town has been recognized by a national program known far and wide as a tree city, and whereas the Falmouth Tree Warden, Falmouth Garden Club, and Falmouth Public Schools recognize the aesthetic value of beautiful trees of Falmouth by organizing a day to celebrate the purity and strength exemplified by a statuesque tree and all living green things, and thereby honor the trees of Falmouth by singing songs, sharing thoughts, and teaching more about the value of our trees. Now, there are we four, Nancy Robbins-Taylor, Edward P. Zielinski II, Douglas C. Brown, Angela Scott Price, and Robert P. Miscali, as a select board of the Town of Falmouth, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 26, as Arbor Day. In witness this whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the great seal of the Town of Falmouth to be affixed this day, Monday, April 1, 2024. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I have a, I have a motion. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, and uh, just so everyone knows, we have Ms. Scott Price. She is here. She is um, in by phone. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call? Zelensky, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. The microphone's too loud. Taylor, aye. Ms. Scott Price? Scott Price, aye. Thank you. Mr. Pearson. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to briefly go over what we're doing for Arbor Day. Uh, this year, as I think you all well know, that we're creating Axis Park at Shivrick's Pond. Um, currently, this is a parcel of woods that's mostly all um, invasive species. We're going, to be we're going to be removing all the invasive species and planting all native species that have, you know, um, ecological benefits um, for the wildlife value and, and also for pollinators. Currently, 100, um, 100 feet of it are in the <coughs> wetland buffer. We're going to be uh, re um, replanting that with all mitigation plantings. And then to the west, we are putting in a pollinator garden. 
and then in the interior will just be all native species. So we're very excited about it. It's going to be a, a pretty big endeavor, endeavor in a very large Arbor Day. And I, I hope all you can show up on the 26th. Awesome. Sure. Any questions or comments from the board? Oh, I'm happy to see this moving forward. We've talked about it for a while. For quite a while. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good that we're ready, ready to get to it. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you so much. And just briefly, quickly, on May 10th mm -hmm. as well, uh, we're going to be uh, hosting the school department. Um, we're bringing down Professor Elwood Pricklethorne. He comes to the schools and talks about the benefits of trees. They'll be on May 10th at T Ticket awesome. in East Island School. And what are the times for these? The 26th? This is April 26th, and the other one will be May 10th. Do you have date uh, time for the May 10th uh, one? Or, or both, both. for this? I do actually. I have actually the agenda right here. Excellent. Thanks. I, I believe the schools will be around 10 o'clock at 10.30, but I can, uh, you can email me and I can send you all that. 10 a.m., okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <clears throat> Any recognitions from the board? Uh, I didn't think of anything. Today. Announcements from the board. Uh, yeah, I have a couple. Mr. Miscali, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m., there will be a uh, meeting at the uh, Gus Canyon Community Center for input on the Falmouth Skate Park. For those who are interested in, in, in that project, there will also be a job fair at uh, Gus Canyon uh, this Saturday from 12 to 3 for people who are interested in recreation, summer camp staff, beach staff, DPW, and, and more. There are a number of other items that are posted on the, uh, on the website of the Recreation Department uh, that people should look at. Summer Adventure Program, uh, Touch of Trucks, Sunday, April 21st, and Wiffle Tee Ball and Junior Baseball, all of which are available. Awesome. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other announcements, Mr. Brown? No, I have nothing. Mr. Zelensky? Good. Good. Okay, we'll move into public comment. <clears throat> public comment may be made on routine matters not on this agenda. This evening, comments are limited to two minutes. Please introduce yourself, and since the matter has not been included on the agenda, the select board will not participate in, in any discussion or debate <coughs> of your topic. And I'm going to ask that we uh, keep the talking low, please, because it's really disruptive when people are talking and, and someone's at the podium. Um, anyone here for public comment? Okay. We are early, so I think we're going to take a couple of things out of order, Mr. Renshaw. We're early for the hearings. Um, <clears throat> why don't we do uh, business number eight, the 2024 seasonal and spring uh, renewals, license renewals. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we'll keep this one short. If you want to talk slowly, we'll, we'll try to. So uh, posted in uh, tonight's agenda is a copy of the uh, businesses which are up for uh, renewal of their annual licenses. It's my recommendation, Madam Chair, that the board approve the uh, renewal of the licenses as posted in tonight's agenda. Okay, thank you. Any question on the um, license renewals? And are you looking for a vote? Yes, I am. I is yes. To renew them. I would move approval of the licenses as listed. Do we need to read them off? We do not. No. We can say that there is as posted. Okay. I mentioned. I move that we approve these licenses as posted. Second, Mr. Brown's motion, Madam Chair. Okay. I have a motion and a second to approve the license renewals of 2024 seasonal and spring annual. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none. All those in favor, by roll call, please. Zinsky, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Thank you. Business okay. seven, Madam Chair. Would, can I recommend we do so? unanimously. Certainly. Go right ahead. Okay. Business item number seven. <coughs> Just as a bit of background and summary, the Finance Committee has recommended approval of a roof replacement project for the North Falmouth Elementary School under Article 21 of the April Annual Town Meeting. Mm -hmm. The funding for this project, per the Finance Committee recommendation, is going to be contingent on approval of a Prop 2.5 debt exemption ballot question at the town election, which the date is May 21st this year. The town clerk 
has advised that the election ballot must be finalized no later than April 16th. The select board routinely votes to place debt exemption ballot questions on the election ballot prior to the town meeting vote. This allows for the votes to take place at a regular televised select board meeting. Madam Chair and Select Board, in the event town meeting does not vote to approve Article 21 by the requisite two-thirds majority, the board can vote to rescind the ballot question from the ballot at a meeting on April 9th or April 10th. We're planning to post Select Board meetings for April 9th and 10th as a contingency plan just for this purpose. Madam Chair and Select Board, I'm recommending the Select Board vote to place the following debt exemption question on the election ballot. The wording for this ballot question has been approved by Bond Council for compliance with applicable state law and bond financing requirements. And I'll read that really quickly for the record. Shall the Town of Falmouth be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and 1 half, so-called the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued in order to pay the cost of engineering, design, and replacement of the North Falmouth Elementary School roof and to include gutters, drainage areas, and catch basins, fascia, repairs to front entranceway and canopy, masonry work, exterior painting, and loading dock driveway reconfiguration to allow for better drainage, interior damage from leaks, including but not limited to floors, ceiling tiles, wall repairs, painting, and insulation replacement. The project scope also includes architectural, engineering, and HVAC, evaluation of costs for future addition of air conditioning, and possible addition of solar energy panels, including, without limitation, all costs that are incidental and related thereto. Madam Chair, the recommended motion this evening for this item is I move that the select board vote to place the Proposition 2 and have debt exemption question for the North Falmouth Elementary School roof as presented on the election ballot of May 21st, 2024. Madam Chair, I'll move the recommended motion as described by the town manager. I second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Zielinski, aye. Ms. Golly, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I can probably get through number six, Madam Chair. Okay. About five let's, minutes if you let's go with the consider and vote fiscal policy. And then we should be able to go right into the hearing. All right, so as you all know, um, we uh, <clears throat> recently completed uh, our 10 year fiscal 2023 capital plan. Um, Upon reviewing the plan, um, the plan total has risen from the fiscal 2022 comp capital plan estimate of about $248.5 million to the fiscal year 2023 plan total of $524,243,784. Madam Chair and Select Board, the new total includes all projects submitted by all departments, whether anticipated to be funded from borrowing, free cash, grants, or other sources. We feel that this is more comprehensive, kind of transparent uh, picture of the, of the capital planning over the next 10 years, including all those sources. The updated number does not include, importantly, amounts for a number of capital needs which have yet to be quantified. And those, as you know, include the new police station, a full review of coastal infrastructure needs, and a comprehensive building assessment improvement study. With the revealing of a more complete capital plan with the exceptions noted above, funding many high priority projects will not fit into the town's debt drop-off approach. In other words, funding the capital plan based on current estimates will require tax increases. The proposed change to the fiscal policy will increase the upper limit of the balance held in our capital stabilization fund by amending section 7E of the fiscal policy. Uh, and you have a copy of that fiscal policy in your packets. Mm -hmm. Question? And that's the only piece that you're amending, am I correct? That is the only section. Thank you, sir. Mr. Miscalli? Um, so it's either three million or up to ten percent. It's, it's a the range. It's the range. So it'll be a minimum of three million dollars. Then capital stabilization to ten percent. The way 10%. it reads, I think, was a little uh, stilted. I, I think maybe right before three million, you might want to consider so that it would read the town will maintain a balance of the greater of three million. No. Okay. No, if I may, that's yeah. that's not the intent. Okay. So what is the, the intent? intent is to adopt a range. <coughs> so the minimum of the range is three million, and the maximum of the range is ten percent of the total estimated cost of projects. So, um, if, if that's not clear, we can we can revise it I to mean, make maybe it. Maybe say a range of <coughs> then, if that's the intent. I just think the way it's worded. I think it could be better worded if that's what it says, a range of between 3% and 10. 
Three million and three million and ten percent. Yep. Of course, something along those lines. Okay. So what would that so, look like? Yeah. So let me t let me take a shot at that on the fly. The town will maintain a minimum balance of three million, and a maximum balance of ten percent of the total estimated cost of projects listed in the ten-year capital plan. Thank you. I like that as well. I like, I like calling out the minimum. Yep. I think that's really important. So we'll, we'll amend that proposed uh, town will obtain a minimum balance of $3 million to a maximum balance of 10%. Great. Great. And As that's amended, I'd, I'd move adoption of the policy. Are we looking for a vote? We do have to vote. Yeah, yeah. we'd like to second that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the amended uh, 7E. Of this of this fiscal policy <coughs> any further discussion amongst the board hearing none all those in favor by roll call please Chomsky aye Scully aye Brown aye Taylor aye Scott Price aye thank you motion passes unanimously <coughs> all right is there anything you can do in one minute or two minutes no, madam chair I don't believe there is Okay, my, my phone says 645 so I'm going to move forward with the hearing do we yes have an interview? Oh, yes, we do. Um, thank you, Mr. Miscali. <coughs> we have two interviews, actually. Well, Luke, First, Luke is sick, I think. But the other young lady's here. Right. So we have the first one, the Affordable Housing Committee, David Sukawi. If you would step up to the podium, please. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Sir, we do have your application. Is there anything that is not on the application that you would like the board to know about you? I can think of little less pleasing than speaking about myself, so I will okay. <laughs> I'll defer and respond to any questions you might have. I thought it was interesting that you were the commissioner of the County Department of Social Services in Syracuse, New York. Uh -huh. that, yes. was, that was an interesting tidbit in your background. Mm -hmm. some any some questions from the board? Some cold winters uh, out in Onondaga County. Say again? Some cold winters out uh, in Onondaga few. County. A few. I would say his background seems strong in this regard, and I would recommend appointment for what's the term? Uh, um, it should be in it, your it unexpired term. Unexpired term until June 30th, 2024. That's my motion. I would move appointment until June 2024. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Zelensky, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Great. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Very Thank you. Okay, our second interview is for the Cultural Council, and one of our people um, called in sick, and so we rescheduled him for April 22nd. And we have uh, Rima Petrosian. 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 Yes. <laughs> I wanted to get that right. Welcome. Is there anything you would like to tell us about yourself that isn't on your resume? Um, well, it is, but I, I'm a daughter of two Armenian immigrants, and I understand the importance of culture in everyone's lives. And as an artist myself, I really want to bring my perspective to the Cultural Council. Wow, that's Sounds awesome. Yeah. Any questions of the applicant from the board? Should be a great addition. I'll move the appointment for a term, an expired term of June 30th, 2024. Excellent. I'll second it. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Slonsky, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Welcome. Thank you so much. Scott Price, aye. Whoops. Okay, now we will move into our public hearings. Our first application for an all alcoholic beverage restaurant license and annual entertainment license and a Sunday entertainment license for 10 Water Street LLC doing business as Pie in the Sky. Um, 10 Water Street, Woods Hall. Mr. Zelensky for the notice, please. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended that 10 Water Street <coughs> LLC doing business as Pie in the Sky Coffee and Bakery 
has applied for an all alcoholic beverage restaurant license. Applications have also been made under Chapter 140, 183 Alpha, as amended, and Chapter 136 of the General Laws for an annual entertainment license and an annual Sunday entertainment license to be exercised at 10 Water Street, Woods Hole, Mass. A hearing on the above application will be held in the Select Board Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall, on Monday, April 1st, 2024, at 6.45 p.m. Comments may be sent to the Select Board at falmouthma.gov, per order of the Select Board, Nancy Taylor, Edwin P. Zielinski, Douglas Brown, Angela Scott Price, Robert P. Miscalli. Thank you, Mr. Zielinski. Madam Chair, before we begin, I'd just like to say that I've worked with Mr. Gore in the past on residential remodeling projects of his house, but that was several years ago, and we don't have any current business, and I think I can be <coughs> impartial and sit on this hearing. Great. Thank you for the notice. Okay, and you are the applicant, correct? Uh, I am actually uh, Anthony Tsakalos, for the record. I'm an okay. attorney at Amen Clower LLP, and I'm here on okay. behalf of the applicant. Yes, thank you. Um, 10 Water Street LLC, which is the owner of Pie in the Sky Coffee and Bakery, located at 10 Water Street in Woods Hole. Uh, and they're seeking a new on-premises liquor license, as well as an annual uh, regular um, entertainment license and an annual Sunday entertainment license as well. Uh, with me tonight is Eric Gura, who is the general manager of Pie in the Sky. Um, Eric bought Pie back in 2002, and he's owned the business from that time until around May 2018 when he sold it to the applicant's parent company, BT Brands Incorporated, uh, which is a publicly traded company uh, listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Um, the applicant was created to be the entity that holds the business pie in the sky. Uh, after the sale to BT Brands, Eric remained in charge of the business. Um, so he's there on a day-to-day -day basis and he oversees management, he oversees staff and the training of the staff. Um, uh, Eric uh, is also the LLC manager of Martha Ertman LLC, which owns the land in the building at 10 Water Street. So he's effectively pie in the sky's landlord. Uh, Pies is a very successful local business that has a very long track record of success in Woods Hole. It's continuously been operating for over 40 years. Eric himself has been running the business for well over 20 years, um, though he doesn't own it anymore, as previously noted. Pie has indoor and outdoor seating. There are 13 seats located indoors. There is another 54 seats located outdoors in the outdoor patio. No customers are permitted to access the rooftop or the basement areas. They'll only be allowed to access the first floor and the outdoor patio seating area. Regarding the outdoor space, Pi plans to rope off the patio in front and in the rear portion of the building so the people will not be able to easily just walk off the premises with alcohol in hand, um, which is actually enhances the safety of the place as, as it is right now. People are invited to come to the restaurant to open mic night, BYOB, that's per Falmouth regulations. Um, so we really think that it would, be a, it would be a safer set of affairs if they're granted a liquor license and are allowed to rope off the area. Uh, the northern side of the building already is covered by a four-foot-tall wooden Hold on one second. Can I hang up one second? Yeah. Could I have some clarification around BYOB? Consumed on the premises. Yeah, hold on. I, I need to hear from, I'm asking our management, please. So, Madam Chair, uh, Peter and I had the <coughs> discussion earlier this afternoon. It's our understanding, and we had a brief discussion, I'll let Peter kind of fill in some of the details with town council. Uh, the town currently has no policy, formal policy, with regards to BYOB. That was my question, that I'm not aware of a BYOB policy. Okay, thank you. The northern side of the building is already covered by a four-foot-tall white picket fence, uh, which stretches from the sign all the way to the back choke point, which is where customers can enter the premises. Uh, there's a gate that's five feet tall that'll remain closed at all times. Uh, the building commissioner, Gary Street, has reviewed these floor, the floor plan here on three separate occasions. He's approved it every single time. Um, most recently, we added the roping uh, along the front and the rear portion that goes from the stair in the back all the way to uh, where that white picket fence starts in the back of the building. There would be only a couple of gaps opening um, in the roping so that people could actually enter the premises uh, and they will be staffed. There will be uh, personnel at each of those openings and there will also be a sign placed there saying no alcohol allowed beyond this point. Um, a large portion of Pius customers come from the ferry traffic with the Steamship Authority located in very close proximity to 10 Water Street. In the summer months people are walking around the area <coughs> nearly 24 hours a day. 
Pie is presently open from 5 to 9 p.m., serving mainly coffee, pastries, sandwiches, but soon they're going to be offering dinner service, and serving liquor will enhance the dinner service and add a new revenue stream to the business. In addition to seeking the new liquor license, Pie is seeking an annual entertainment license and an annual Sunday entertainment license, which would enhance the atmosphere at the restaurant by allowing Pie to feature local musicians who play to patrons in the afternoons and evenings. Uh, it's noteworthy for me to mention that Pie had an annual uh, entertainment licenses before the pandemic for about 15 years. There was never really any issue. I'm sure that a few people in town may have uh, complained about that in the past, but they did it successfully for the entire time. And the only reason that the um, entertainment licenses lapsed was you know, due to the pandemic. They really didn't know when people would start coming out and about again, and they're here to rectify that now. Um, and now that the pandemic's over, offering entertainment and alcohol to patrons will help this local business stay afloat. It'll help breathe new life into the downtown area of Woods Hole and will provide residents and visitors with another option to get out of their houses and hotel rooms, as it were, and enjoy a meal and a beverage and have fun at an outstanding local establishment uh, with a very long and well-established track record of success in Woods Hole and Falmouth uh, in general. And we understand that some members of the community have reached out to the town with various arguments and opposition to the grant of these licenses. And I would like the board to know that it's our position that this is a restaurant that is attempting to survive and thrive in a post-pandemic era. Uh, a few comments I read stated something to the effect that expanded dinner service, extended hours of operation, year-round entertainment and alcohol service is a lot to ask in one series of applications all, all at uh, one time. And we don't think that Pi is asking for anything out of the ordinary. And most restaurateurs on Cape Cod uh, would agree that offering liquor and entertainment to customers is a necessity. I understand that not everybody feels that way, but I think the overwhelming majority of restaurateurs that um, you know, have been existing for a long time on the Cape would agree that alcohol sales really do aid uh, the local business uh, revenue. Eric Gurra is the person in charge on a day-to-day -day basis, though he no longer owns the business, as previously mentioned. He is the landlord of the business. He has a vested interest in this business and success. He's been tasked by the owners with continuing oversight. And he's operated the business continuously for over two decades. He rightfully enjoys an overwhelmingly positive reputation in Woods Hole and broader Falmouth. Uh, the outdoor areas will be roped off in such a way that if anything, less people will be wandering around. Uh, and patrons of the restaurant will be confined to the premises when consuming food or beverages. Um, as previously mentioned, Pi had an entertainment license for several years, approximately 15 years prior to the onset of the pandemic when it expired. Uh, and in terms of the entertainment being offered, it will typically be a solo guitarist. On occasion, bands will be invited to play, uh, <clears throat> but we do not envision this turning into the Xfinity Center in Mansfield or, or a concert venue amphitheater scenario. This is a, a local business that's a coffee shop that wants to expand its menu to offer dinner service. It wants to offer alcohol to patrons, and it would like to have uh, entertainment on occasion being played. Uh, and Pi envisions that the alcohol service and entertainment will likely wrap up most nights <coughs> probably around 10 p.m., um, although we're asking for permission to operate until 1 in the morning. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, folks? Let him present the case, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and beyond that, everything else is basically as set forth in the application. And we're happy to take any questions from the board and the public at this time. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, so when was your last uh, valid entertainment license? What year was that? I believe the last valid entertainment license was in 2020. And since that time, you've provided entertainment without a license, am I correct? I don't believe that's the case. You um, haven't had the open mic night and you haven't had people so we, in? We tried to get the open mic night up and running and it was spotty because of the pandemic. Um, <coughs> we had a license the year the pandemic struck and then as you know, everything just disappeared. And the two years following, uh, last summer was the first summer we really started to see that it was gonna be something that could be viable again. We had a lot of people asking about it. And so this year we wanted to come and get right back where we were pre-pandemic. But I think you did have it, and because I've seen some pictures of it, but I, I don't think you had a valid license to have entertainment. So that was my first question. My second question is, as I just did a little research on the people who now own Pie in the Sky, mm -hmm. um, it, it talks about uh, be owned by BT Brands. Yes, BT okay, Brands. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna finish sure my thing. question, okay? Um, and that they own a fast food chain called Burger Time, located in North and South Dakota, Minnesota, and Woods Hole. 
And so I was sort of, one, that's exactly what it says. That's a typo. <laughs> um, and and the, another subsidiary is that it's a fast food um, restaurant chain called Burger Time. So I was just curious if there's a plan at some point that, that maybe pie in the sky would morph into something other than it is. I didn't know if that was part of the business plan moving forward. I don't believe that's part of the business plan whatsoever. Uh, Burger Time is a North Dakota, South Dakota, and regional Minnesota operation. I believe mm -hmm. there's 10 of them in total. I don't think there's any intent to uh, expand this to Woods Hole. And then they, they talked about in January 26, 2024, a proposed name change to allow uh, to align the name with their new business strategy. So when you read that, I just started to wonder what the long-term business uh, plan was. No, if I may, but, Madam Chair, I think that... <clears throat> Pie in the sky is a is a very very it's a fixture in the Woods Hole community, and I don't think there's any intent to change that. I, I understand that. I'm well aware of pie in the sky. Sure. Um, any questions from the board? Comments? I'll wait. <coughs> um, you had described in your testimony that uh, that you went without a, a business license because of the strains of COVID. Are you aware of any of the other businesses that operated in a similar fashion to you that did the same? Or did they maintain their licenses? <coughs> no, I'm really not generally aware of what other businesses did. I know a lot of businesses closed during the pandemic due to the uh, you know, hard time that everybody had due to all the lockdowns that we experienced. Um, so you know, at the time, pie in the sky felt that there wasn't people coming out and about and there was no sense in holding the license because we really didn't, well, they didn't really know uh, when things would resume back to normal. And now that uh, it's in the rear view, I think that they're ready to, you know, seek those entertainment licenses again. And I'd like to revisit your statement about the BYOB. What is your interpretation of what you're allowed to do there? Because we don't have a, a policy? Yeah, my, my explain what you had said before? Yeah, my understanding is that, that was, uh, there was nothing that precluded the business from, from doing that. And I don't believe that's the case. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, I'm not sure. An another question I had is that you're looking for live entertainment. Uh, Madam Chair, could we, could we elaborate on that Assistant. last question just a little bit? Oh, sure. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Well, I'm sorry. Um, with, <clears throat> um, the open mic night has been going on at Pi for 42 years. And for the 20 years prior to I owned the business, we didn't have any license for it. And for the first probably five or six years that I had operated, 2002 to 2007, we didn't have a license. We finally realized it'd probably be the right thing to do, but it's always been an informal thing, basically involving high school and college age kids, a lot of bands that now perform on the Cape got their start as 13, 14, 15 year olds. So we, it's always been sort of an organic, not really formal thing. Um, and we did a little lapse during, during COVID. I actually asked if I could get my license extended or you know, as a grace to move forward because we didn't use it that entire year, but they said, no, you just have to wait. Mm -hmm. I said, well, if there's no one coming out, we'll wait until the situation looks like we'll be able to do it successfully again, then we get you know, reapply and get our license back. But. Thank you. Um, so in that entertainment license, you're asking for solo guitarist or band with <laughs> amplified vocals and instruments. And one of the things that this board has talked about a lot is how do we keep the music and the noise within the proximity of the business the and the property lines. And so. How would you intend to do that? I, the amplification is concerning to me as well as a band. Well, as I mentioned before, I think <coughs> most, most of the time, and I mean the overwhelming majority of the time, we're talking about a solo guitarist that is playing what it would be an acoustic guitar that has electrification ability to plug into an amp, but mm -hmm. playing ac acoustically through an amp, essentially. Uh, and that, that's essentially what we're envisioning. Uh, having said that, Pi has been a launching spot for local bands, and on occasion they would like to be able to have a band play. Uh, we understand that there's other businesses within the area and within the vicinity that have outdoor entertainment and have bands playing there. So if other you know, restaurants are doing that as well, I don't see why Pi wouldn't be able to do it in a way uh, that you know, the town would appreciate and which would be respectful to the community as well. Any other questions or comments from the board? <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Brown. So I believe that the other restaurants you're referring to probably have their entertainment indoors. Is that not correct? Um, no? I don't think that's correct. No, I believe that there's at least one other uh, bar in town that has outdoor uh, entertainment that's amplified okay. on a regular basis. And we had a lot of correspondence, as I, I see you've got the file <coughs> there as well. Yes, sir. And a lot of folks were commenting from Buzzards Bay Avenue and so forth that the sound does travel quite far mm -hmm. from the property. Yes, mm -hmm. And so there's... A lot of concern has been raised by the neighborhood, and uh, I'm wondering how that's 
we're going to translate to this new entertainment license. Sure, sure. Uh, my understanding is that there's not that much uh, residential um, dwellings in the immediate vicinity of the area. Now, that's not to say that there's none, but um, um, I think that... The, what's what's contemplated is essentially acoustic guitar playing through an amplifier with an occasional band coming through. This business is very, very mindful of the local community. It's been a fixture for over 40 years now. They do not want to alienate the public. They do not want to upset the public. They want to do things in a respectful way. They're very mindful of all of these things. Uh, did you have anything to add on? I, say, I live one street over from Budzers Bay. so it, mm -hmm. You know, if the wind's blowing the right direction, you can hear the announcements on the steamship terminal clear as you guys are here tonight. Um, I do intend to keep this the way that we have traditionally in the past. It should be an asset to the community and a place for kids to go and people to enjoy music. And anytime we've had a complaint, it's very easy for me to either physically go there and shut it down or simply call and be like, too loud, get rid of it. We're done for the night. And that's how we've always dealt with any complaints in the past. Okay. Uh, in, in your presentation, Kelly? thank you. In, in your presentation, you said that uh, uh, people wouldn't be able to easily uh, take alcohol off the premises. What 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 steps will you take to ensure that that's not going to happen? I mean, we know people congregate across the street uh, regularly. We we know that that's a really tight area. Cars coming around the bend, going down. Uh, to to the uh, terminal and the landfall and, and all those other um, establishments. What what efforts? I heard you say you were going to have a staff person there, but I mean, what kind of training? What kind of efforts are you going to put in to make sure that this doesn't happen? Sure. Thank you for your question, sir. Um, I think that the word easily. Um, Leaving the premises was, was maybe a, a, a mischaracterization. I'd like to recharacterize that as, as not possible to leave the area with drinks in hand. That is the exact scenario that Pie in the Sky wants to avoid. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a lot of roping around the patio. They will be staffed at the entrances on both sides. Uh, Pie also intends to employ bouncers uh, when alcohol is being served as well. Um, that are trained. Uh, Eric is himself TIP certified. His staff will be TIP certified. Everyone serving alcohol will be as well. So this business is going to be very, very cognizant of the risks that are presented and is going to do everything in their power to mitigate those risks, frankly. So, Go ahead, Mr. Brown. So typically when we have a beer and wine license, it's kind of like for a lunch place yeah. and then Liquor is more for like a full seated restaurant. Is the menu changing to? A little bit. We're going to add a couple of items. Lobster salad on a popover, grilled smash burger. Um, we've had a bunch of customers. We've already tried a couple of these as specials. And people have said, like, boy, it would be nice to get a cold beer with this. We heard enough of that, so sort of got everybody's wheels turning. Um, we do intend to employ bouncers, especially if there's live music going on. Um, a couple of the staff have uh, military training. And I'm hoping to recruit them actually to be the bouncers. So we feel like we've got a pretty good plan in place to handle this. Mm. Madam Chair. Okay, I'm going to go to Mr. Zielinski and then I'll go back to Mr. Mescal. Gentlemen, don't you, the terminology you're using with military bouncers <clears throat> and all that makes this sound a little, a little less ancillary than it was initially proposed. No, these, these personnel that he's mentioning just happen to have military training. We're not going to be bringing I, I, I in people from that, the but base. It's sounding more and more to me like a bar than it is a restaurant that serves alcohol. No, I mean, it would be a, it would be a restaurant that has an all alcohol license like any bar. Just there's not going to be a bar per se. It's going to be counter service. Um, that's what it is. So they're expanding the restaurant. They're, they're expanding the theme from a, what is now a coffee shop and bakery to a, a restaurant that offers dinner service as well. By adding how many food menu items? Three, you said? Three or four. Occasional rotating specials as well. To start. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Mr. Miscali? Uh, two questions, uh, and they are would you consider questions. But number one, would you consider doing away with alcohol and just having beer and wine? That's one question. The other is would you consider less than 1, p 1 a.m. in the morning consistent with you know the residential neighborhood that we're, or the <clears throat> say residential but the close uh, community that Woods Hall is into something like nine o'clock on during the week 
10 o'clock on weekends, something along those lines? Yes, I would say that we would consider both items. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that for Cape restaurants, a liquor license is a lifeline. And, you know, Pi has struggled through the pandemic. They're, they're still doing well, don't get me wrong, but they, they want to enhance their revenue stream to the greatest extent possible. And they feel that a full liquor license is appropriate. Having said that, I think they would consider beer and wine, uh, and they, uh, it goes hand in hand with considering uh, reducing the hours of operation to, to keep them essentially what they are. Um, really, they, uh, if, if they were going to reduce it from 1 a.m., they'd, they'd prefer to you know, formally reduce that to maybe midnight or 11 p.m. if possible. Um, but I wouldn't say that anything's off the table. They, they're very comfortable staying open till 10 p.m. Um, if that's what the, all the, the, what the town will allow. Um, but we thought that it made sense for them, like every other restaurant that serves liquor, to be able to serve till 1 a.m. Any other questions from the board? I, I have uh, one more is, uh, what about parking? <coughs> I know it's <coughs> a nightmare in, in Woods Hole, mm -hmm. and this is probably, if it's gonna increase revenue, it's gonna increase traffic and customer base numbers. Most of our clients are from the steamship. And it's zone B1, so the parking I don't see be any more troublesome than it already is going to be. And hand in, with, hand in hand with that, there's not going to be any additional seating that's being proposed or any, you know, uh, expansion of the, the premises right now. So we don't think that there's any uh, requirement for additional parking. I've learned from the owners that about 80 to 85 percent of the business that comes through is traffic from the Steamship Authority. So most of it's going to be foot traffic anyways. Okay. Mr. Miscelli. Just, uh, Mr. Gurra, had you reached out to the community uh, about your plans, or is this the first time the community's actually hearing about this? We haven't really made a whole big, uh, big deal out of it. Um, we're just trying to see if we can get this to happen. We don't really expect it to do a whole lot to the day-to-day -day operations. Any other questions from the board before I open it up to the public? Public? Comment on this application. Yes, sir. Sure. You need to come up to the podium. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and could you state your name for the record, please? My name is Alan Steinbach. I live in Woods Hole. I'm a licensed physician in the state of Massachusetts. I take care of a lot of kids. Frankly, Eric Guerra raised my kids. On Monday nights, his idea, his idea to have an open mic was something that we hadn't acted on otherwise in the town, and it was remarkably successful. If you don't know the area, there's a natural amphitheater <coughs> lawn across from Pie in the Sky, and that's almost entirely jammed with non-drinking people. I think my concern, aside from saying that Woods Hall needs another liquor license like it needs a bicycle for a fish, um, <laughs> is to basically say that our, our total hope is that Eric and the owners of Pie in the Sky are able to maintain it, are able to prosper. If it requires ropes around it, there will be ropes around it. If an entertainment license is needed for the type of entertainment they've been doing, I would very much support an entertainment license. But as a parent, and now a grandparent, I am adamantly against adding more liquor license of any sort, beer, wine, or liquor, into Woods Hole, particularly in a venue which is known for and very, very friendly for non-drinking underage people. And I haven't heard a, a persuasive <coughs> argument, aside from showing the actual profit and loss statement, which we don't have a right for, saying why it would be an improvement for the town of Woods Hole to add a liquor license, beer, wine, or liquor to this particular location on the assumption that that's going to be needed in order for it to be successful. I think it'll be successful because if it keeps on doing what it's doing, which is being a great place for people to come by bicycles, a lot of bicycle trips end in pie in the sky. And for kids to come on Monday night, and here, open mic, and I completely support Eric's support and the fact that he probably did help create many of the local bands. So there's no criticism of that whatsoever, and frankly, it's not a criticism of the representatives of the owners. 
I can understand why they would like to make more money, but not with alcohol, not at pie in the sky. I'd oppose it completely. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else for public comment? Ms. Bumpus? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Catherine Bumpus. I'm um, co-president of the Woods Hole Community Association. I submitted some comments to you. I will um, thank you all for getting me back to reading some things that I haven't read in a long time, which are the Town of Felmas Alcoholic Beverage Re Regulations, which start out with a very interesting piece in the preamble that says the number of licenses for on-premise consumption is not governed by quotas. There is no compelling reason for the Board of Selectmen to issue licenses if, the, if, in the opinion of the Board, the public need and the public good will not be served. We certainly have enough liquor licenses in Woods Hole. There are eight or nine other places where you can go buy a drink. Um, there is no place else that really is open in the evening that you can't buy a drink, that is somebody who didn't want to be consuming alcohol or be faced with others who are consuming alcohol would be able to go. I will say that a very rosy picture of open mic has been presented, a very rosy picture of the um, entertainment that has happened over the past years. It has been a sticking point for the village. It has been a place that some people enjoy, that some people feel is very overwhelming. There are times when there are huge numbers of youth who don't behave as well as we would like. They are noisy. Some nights it goes very late. You have to text Eric, or it doesn't get shut down on time. Um, some of us get up and go to work in the morning no, not everybody's on vacation in Woods Hole all the time. So it's tough to have it, to hear it at 10 o'clock at night in the kitchen. Um, I'd prefer not to. I'd like it to be quiet. The past number of years, they, are, they have been having entertainment and without a license. So it's hard to say that they are willing to comply with license regulations that are put in front of them. Clearly, he understood the need for a license for a period of time and chose not to come back and renew it for whatever reasons. I don't know what those are. Having alcohol in that small outdoor space with a piece of line up to keep people from walking past it doesn't seem like enough control. This is counter service. This is not table service. The outdoor restaurants in Falmouth generally, if you're out on the sidewalk at Anejo, there is somebody bringing you your drink, and they will probably notice if you walk away with your drink. Here, most things are served in a to-go cup. Most of the service is to-go. I don't know how you prevent people from walking out except for with a lot of staff and a lot of bouncers, and that doesn't seem particularly welcoming. There is also not a lot of room on that patio, and if you take space and put it a band or a concert or even just somebody playing guitar there, you're taking away seating space. There's no way to keep it within the property. You are basically licensing entertainment off the property. And I don't think that's something that this board has really been comfortable with in the past. So I outlined some requests for an earlier stop time, no alcohol, and I hope that you'll consider that. Thank you. Anyone else, before I close this hearing? Yes. Ma'am, did you? Ma'am, did you want to come up? And then Mr. Parrish, I'll take you next. And then do I have someone over here that would like to speak? OK. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joan Glazebrook. And I'm a former teacher. And uh, in this world we live in, community is something that we have lost in many places. Community in Woods Hole in Falmouth um, is something that people are attracted to when they decide to come and live here. And um, my question is, what interest does BT Brands 
have in our community? What do they know about our community? Why would they care about our community? They're on the stock exchange. So um, my um, question is, would we want to provide something in our community that is owned by a stock exchange BT brand company from North Dakota? What is their interest in our community? Thank you. Mr. Parrish, you're up, and then I will, there's someone over here that would like to speak. Yeah, I think you focus on pictures. Okay. And we know you, but please introduce yourself, okay? okay. Um, just, I sent this out to your email today, but it's what I just got back in the town. I heard about this. Oh, okay. So I wanted to um, just bring pictures about what I'm going to speak about. This okay. Really okay. Thank you, <coughs> Hi, all. My, my name is Branch Parrish. I'm the owner of the Woods Hole Market at 87 Water Street in Woods Hole. And I want to preface what I'm going to say by I'm, I'm not against business in any way, shape, or form. I'm all for good business. Um, my, my big problem is really, well, there's a couple of them. But anyway, I think before you issue a, a license for all alcohol pouring license, there's some things that need to be addressed. One of the main things is loading zone. There is no loading zone at all around pie in the sky. It's a huge problem. <coughs> I personally go to the bank every morning or every other day and probably 80% of the time there's a truck there that blocks the entrance to be able to park uh, in back of the bank. Many times I've come out of the bank and had the trucks uh, with their uh, ramps extended all the way and I have to wait 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes. Sometimes they're nice enough, they'll pack it up and they, 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 they put it back in, move the truck and let me out. Um, so I, I think that's a huge problem right off the bat. Um, I don't think it's fair that this problem lands on the backs of the community and the, and the businesses in the village. Um, parking's, always, like I said, parking's always being blocked. And so, so that's one of my biggest concerns is the fact that um, there is no loading zone. I've talked to uh, Eric about it in the past, and it just kind of falls on deaf ears. And I just don't understand why <clears throat> his delivery trucks can't parked down by the lee, uh, the lee side now it is, again. Um, that's the closest loading zone, I believe. Um, and then the next closest loading zone would be down in, on, um, on Luscombe, I guess, uh, in front of the old Jimmy's and the liquor store. And, but the drivers don't seem to want to, you know, hump it up the hill or whatever, or they'll park in front, or as one of those pictures you'll see, a lot of times they park on the bridge, taking a right to go into the steamship, coming up, coming up railroad, they'll park on the right-hand side and kind of block traffic there for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes at a time sometimes. Um, I just don't think that's fair. Uh, I have a loading zone in front of my store, 127 feet. I don't think that's fair either, but that's a whole other issue. Um, but I don't have trucks unloading all over the place. Um, so it, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with this whole, this whole thing. As a matter of fact, I was going to come to the selectmen um, about this issue, and I just got back into town about a week and a half ago, and I just found out about uh, this uh, liquor license he hearing on Friday. So I haven't really had a lot of time to, to figure things out. But anyway, <coughs> that's one of my biggest concerns. I just thought that this was the time to present it uh, because he is going for an all-alcoholic li liquor license. It's going to be a lot more traffic, um, a lot more deliveries, and like I said, I think the loading zone issue needs to be addressed as far as that goes. As far as uh, the liquor license is going, I've, I've, I've been the holder of liquor licenses, uh, package store and restaurant licenses uh, in the town of Falmouth. And the questions I've always been asked uh, by the board anytime I come for a liquor license is, where's the liquor going to be stored? Is there going to be a bar, which we just found out there isn't going to be a bar? Um, a lot of the staff at Pine in the Sky is very young. 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. What, the biggest thing is, again, where's the liquor being stored? Is it going to be stored in the basement, you know, in the walk-ins where staff is down there working, underage people and older people? 
Um, so those are some of the, the, the questions I have as far as that goes. And, uh, but again, my biggest problem is not about business per se, but it's the loading zone because it's, a, it's really a huge problem down there and I think it really needs to be addressed as a whole, to be honest with you. Um, and that's, that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I, I can't see you. It's your turn. <clears throat> Thank you for your time this evening. Appreciate you uh, dedicating your evening to this. My name is James Anthony. I'm the president and CEO of Martha's Vineyard Bank. Uh, the bank that we refer to is Martha's Vineyard Bank. And you can see it on the drawings that were provided. There's a, a marking here that says wall of bank. So the bank's building is directly adjacent to pie in the sky. And that are the bank's property projects be behind the parking lot behind Pie in the Sky is owned by Martha's Vineyard Bank as well. Um, I would um, corroborate Mr. Parrish's remarks in terms of loading area. It definitely directly impacts our parking. It is an ongoing, it was a very contentious issue and it's, it's less so now and we appreciate that um, a bit more constructive. Uh, but it is an ongoing issue, whether it's from delivery trucks or also uh, pie-in-the-sky employees or customers is a continuing problem of parking in the parking lot as if it's, uh, as if it's a part of pie-in-the-sky, which creates significant issues for our <coughs> employees given that there's only a limited number of spots. They pull in the morning and either there's a delivery truck blocking them or uh, they come to try and catch the ferry maybe to go across to the island or back or in this building and someone's parking in all the spaces and they only recognize half the cars. It's uh, a significant annoyance for, for our employees and our customers as well trying to use the bank as Mr. Parrish indicated. Um, <coughs> secondly, a specific point on entertainment. So the what's marked as an entertainment location in the magenta arrow that shows on the drawing uh, in the color copy um, is directly to the left of that is the wall of the bank. So on the other side of that drywall are bank employees trying to conduct bank business. So you have a six inch wall separating them from the from the entertainment that's there. And so a specific request to that would be, there was a request about the ending time of the entertainment, but the starting time of the entertainment to be limited to, um, limited to 5 p.m. on weekdays. On weekends, in the afternoon, the bank building is, is not utilized by customers, so it wouldn't be impactful on Saturday afternoon and Sunday. But during the week before 5, it would have a direct and material impact on the operations of the bank. Um, access to the parking lot, as I say, the, the relationship with the, the, the bank relative to the parking lot has been problematic over the years. And I'd make that, this comment very specific to the parking on the right-hand diagram, upper right corner, that I don't know about everyone else, but most of the establishments that serve alcohol that I've been to, it's that dark corner where people can get around the corner There's, is where all the shenanigans happen. In this case, that corner, upper right corner, is the access to the bank's parking lot. So I can imagine, and it's also um, relatively um, low traveled going back along the building there. So I think if anything's going to happen, any kind of shenanigans, it's gonna happen in the parking lot around the corner through that space. So looking closely at the ingress, egress at that location and maybe fencing it off, I don't think that a rope is gonna do it there. It's, they're just gonna step over it or unhook it and hook it back behind them. Um, the, Mr. Parrish uh, delineated the concern about where is the liquor going to be stored similar concern about where are the empty kegs going to be stored and as we all know empty kegs smell like stale beer right and so where are those going to be stored because there is not 
an, a storage location the, of any size outside of, of Pie in the Sky. Um, those are my comments. Um, I also heard about this on Friday of last week, so apologies if I'm ill-prepared. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Ted Fitzell. I live in Woods Hole. And I think there's an elephant in the room. Uh, Dr. Steinbach pointed out there's a, a natural amphitheater across the street from Pie in the Sky. And when they have these, this entertainment, it's filled with people. And now you're going to start serving alcohol. It's already very dangerous where they walk between across the road over to get a cup of coffee. But if you start serving alcohol, I think you're going to have a very serious public safety problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? OK, I'll take one more comment. Yes, sir. <coughs> My name is Tom Renshaw. I've lived in Woods Hole for 75 years, and I've been coming to liquor license hearings for the last 30 or 40 years as former president of the community association. We tried to express the feeling of the village that we are overwhelmed by the development of the liquor licenses and what, and what they mean to us. And every time there's a new business, they say, we got to be we got to be equal to the, the other guys because they already have them. I think that's <clears> a spurious <throat> argument. I think this thing was generated out of a tiny little place, and now it's developed into a very big, very successful thing, and there's absolutely no reason why it can't consider, continue like it is. I think it's very outrageous that they're asking for a liquor license on, on this thing, and I'm, I'm very, very strongly opposed to it. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Okay. Motion to close, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam uh, Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, the applicant requests that this hearing be continued to a later date uh, just so that we can discuss with ownership uh, the suggestions that Mr. Mascali had made as far as potentially uh, serving beer and wine as opposed to full liquor and potentially reducing the operating hours uh, from what is being sought. But we could modify that tonight. Couldn't we condition it? If we so chose, I'm you, not you sure could, why you we could. need to close. You could. Well, I don't, I'm not sure we need to close the hearing because we could modify well, it. Well, I'd like to have the opportunity to talk to the owners of the business about it. Um, Mr. Miscali? Just, just to clarify, I didn't suggest it. I mm -hmm. just asked if you would consider it. So well, we, we would consider it, and uh, I think that the owners of the business deserve the opportunity to, to consider that as well. Uh, Mr. Johnson's job? Sure. So in, in response to your question, Madam Chair, the, the board could make a decision based on what's in front of you this evening. Um, the board could choose to continue the hearing um, as requested by the applicant so they can speak to the owners and come back with a sp specific proposal that would be acceptable to them. So the board is not obligated to continue the hearing. And if I may, Madam Chair, um, these <clears throat> comments that we've received from the public, they were emailed to us today at 5.10 p.m. by the select board's office. So we haven't had much time to react to it either as well. And I think the owners of the business would like to at least go through it and be able to address the concerns the community has. Well, what Chair? is, oh, Mr. Zelensky? I, I have a question um, that, that'll piggyback off what you just said. Uh, <coughs> in your earlier testimony, you said that while there was time, you haven't reached out to the community prior to this. How long has this been in the works? This has been in the works for a few months. We submitted the application, I believe, for the first time in February. So there was no time to reach out to uh, what's all small. Well, we didn't re we didn't receive formal comments from the town. So now we have those in writing. Uh, we received them less than an hour before this meeting started. I think the owners of the business would like to review them and you know would like to understand what the concerns are. Being but, out that of was, state. That was your obligation to do yeah. that, not not them to come knock on your door to find out what you were doing. Just, well, just, if you may. yeah, of course. Just, just to be clear, you know, we've been talking about this on and off for a few months. Um, we had mentioned to a number of folks just casually that we were gonna think about pursuing it and sort of feel the waters. Um, and we've been na navigating the application process since then. But you know, that's I think why we're gonna try to maybe possibly continue to give us a little more time because as Anthony mentioned, we just got the comments. I hadn't heard anything and I'm there every day about any opposition until 
You know, and I understand where everybody's coming from. You know, we don't want this to be a bad thing. So, so uh, I'll finish up with this. While um, each board member has their own way of looking at this, um, you have to ask yourself when you go back to your ownership, is it a positive influence on the community? And I see with the density, the safety issues, the logistical issues, and the previous disregard for the requirements that all the other businesses had to abide by during that tough time that you described, that it's, it's going to be an uphill battle to get my support on this, just so you know. Thank you, Mr. Zelinsky. Anything else from the board? Uh, what is Madam the Chair, I do have a couple questions. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Scott Price. Sorry, I, I recognize it's difficult for me to jump in. Um, so I'm wondering, obviously anyone who plans to purchase and drink alcohol needs to be 21. So does that mean it's on the, uh, the cashiers who are inside to check ID, or does it mean that ID is going to be checked as people go through the rope? And, and does that mean that people who are not 21 would not be able to go in and purchase food and leave? How, I'm just wondering the logistics of that. Logistically, there will be a designated bartender. You will have to present ID to that designated bartender. And in the evenings that we have a crowd, we're going to have one staff person at the, at the front choke point and another staff person at the back choke point checking IDs. I take this very seriously. It's definitely a double-edged sword, but I wouldn't be here if I didn't think we could do this successfully to the benefit of the community. But I do believe it is. We have to handle it very carefully. Did you have another question, Ms. Scott Price? I, so I just to further clarify, so if someone is checking IDs at the front and the back um, on a night that you have a crowd, if someone such as a uh, you know, 20-year-old who normally comes to open mic night or something goes in and wants to just buy a coffee, they would, so they would have their ID checked at the front, somehow inform the staff that they're not 21, but then get to the bar and they would have their ID checked a second time? Or something like a stamp or a wristband system could be enacted. So if someone comes to the front, they're over 21, they get a wristband, they can go inside, and then the bartender knows they can purchase alcohol. Is that what you're saying? That's something I've seen work in the past and something we talk, talked about using as one of the tools to control the situation. Okay, but that's, that's not confirmed yet. That's just an idea that you have, correct? Well, we're going to, we fully intend to do one of the two. We've got to make sure that we know who's of age. Thank you. Mr. Miscali? Yeah, I mean, clearly safety and, and people going across the street with liquor is a, is a big concern. I'm, I'm, I'm also concerned about the rear access, mm -hmm. and I think that's even more of a problem. And again, not a, not a suggestion. But uh, if, if it is continued, you know, is there a consideration to not allowing, somehow blocking off the rear uh, to prevent anyone? Because it's a little... That's where the bouncer would come in, or the door person. Bouncer, I think, is a bit of a harsh word. We don't really see a situation where we're going to have, you know... Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else from the board? I would say that we... We should ask where the liquor is going. That's a good point that one of the residents made. And also the storage of the So the whole pen. facility is fully cameras. We have cameras all over the place uh, under lock and key, either in the office or in a lock cage in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And that's all. It's all going to come up. Yeah, and we're also not going to do kegs or anything like that to respond to the banks. You know, we're going to start this small. It's all going to be um, individual bottles, individual single servings, really. Um, I want tight control <laughs> on this. I want every bottle accounted for. Ms. Miscali. Is there a capacity limit uh, as, as far as your are established? Just 49? 49, yeah. So inside, outside, no more than 49 <coughs> people? That's right. I believe it's 49. We have a seating oh, chart 67. that's on the plan right here. As you can right. see, there's uh, uh, Sorry. 13 seats indoor. There's uh, 50. So everybody's going to have to be seated when they get a drink. There's no standing around, milling around the bar. There's not going to be a bar. Yeah, there's not going to be a place where people, um, it, there won't be any milling about, exactly. That's, that's to but, your point. It, but it sort of begs the question, because I've been there when, yeah. the, when it moves over, when the kids move over to the, the um, that, yes. yeah. yeah, across the street. There's a really nice place to sit and hang out. I, I have to be honest. I've gone over the, the application, and I've thought about this a lot. I don't think there's a compelling reason to issue an alcohol license to pie in the sky. Um, 
I'm certainly willing to, you know, leave the hearing, but I, this is a hard one. I, there, to me, there is no compelling reason to add another liquor license to Woods Hole. I went back and I, you know, again, looked at what's available and is there some community need, and I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm not convinced. I have, I have the same, <coughs> same concerns, but I think that we could let the applicant see, you know, just think about some of the things that have been raised and, uh, and, and continue it. That would be. I, I would agree it would, would be fair to allow them to come back with a more refined plan and give us what they think is the most minimal impact to the community that they could present. So, so the, if I'm hearing you correctly, you would, you may consider that a beer and wine license would be appropriate, if if they were willing to take all alcohol off and put beer. In, but to me, it, I mean, I still have a lot of concerns about the traffic and the, the you know where it is exactly, and that impact. But I think we you know owe it to a, you know, a, a good community partner up to this time, from what I can tell, to at least go back think about it and come back to us again. So is that sort of the pleasure of the board to continue the hearing? I don't know if it was taking a vote right now. <clears throat> I don't think, I think there's too many things that, that it, it's, it, it'll be a brand new presentation. If, if, if you take every one of the concerns that we've all discussed and come back, it won't be an amended application. It'll be all brand new, it'll have to be. Mm. There's so much to add to this. I don't think there's any amending this application to that extent. That's my feeling. I hear what you're saying. So let's, let's, does someone want to make a motion to continue the hearing? I would move that we continue it and give the opportunity for the applicant to come back in, what, 30 days or so? 30 days is plenty of time. Okay. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, I have a uh, motion and a second to continue the hearing. Um, any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call. Scali, aye. Uh, Brown, aye. Ms. Scott Price? Scott, Scott Price, aye. Taylor, no. Zelensky, nay. Okay, so the, the motion passes three to two, and we will see you back in 30 days. Thank you very much. Great, thank you for your time, everybody. <clears throat> Okay, let's move on. We're going to move into our second public hearing. Application. Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You have to give a date, don't you? We do, we do need to uh, state a date certain. Please. For the hearing. Uh, May 6th is our next scheduled select board meeting. Um, could we, do we have to do it on May 6th? Can we do it on the next meeting? May 22nd. Okay. So we will revisit this on May 22nd. Very good. Thank you, Madam Chair. May 20th. May 20th. May 20th? Yeah. Yes. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay. We're going to move into our second public hearing. Application for... Can we turn this down? Yeah. These are loud. These are, these are yeah. echoing. Um, application for an all-alcohol beverages restaurant license for Kim, King Kraken, Inc., doing business as Romeo 75 Davis Straits in Falmouth. Mr. Renshaw, and then I will look to the applicant. Thank you, Madam Chair. The applicant completed the attached application for a new license, all <coughs> alcoholic beverages restaurant, back on February 1st. The building commissioners reviewed the application and approved the floor plan and has stipulated that there is to be no outdoor seating approved. The police department has reviewed the application and had uh, no concerns or objections. Fire Rescue Department has also reviewed the application and stated no objections to its approval. The Health Department has reviewed the app application and has stated that the approval of the application is pending the issuance of a food service establishment Can permit. Motion to Thank you. Okay, are you Can representing? Uh, oh, yes, please read the notice. Sorry. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended that King Kraken Inc. doing business as Romeo's has applied for an all-alcoholic beverage restaurant license to be exercised at 75 Davis Straits. Falmouth Mass, a hearing on the above application will be held at the Select Board Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall on Monday, April 1st, 2024 at 645 p.m. Comments may be sent to the Select, uh, to select Board at falmouthma.gov. Per order of the Select Board, Nancy R. Taylor, Edwin P. Zielinski, Douglas C. Brown, Angela Scott Price, Robert P. Miscali. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tommy Pontello. I'm the applicant. Uh, I'm also the manager owner of uh, King Kraken and Romeo's. Uh, I have brought my parents uh, in support. Uh, they've been uh, very helpful in the renovation and um, beginning of the restaurant's opening. Um, I also uh, have submitted to you, uh, I have two letters of reference. Uh, one comes from a Falmouth uh, resident, a longtime resident. Uh, one is also from uh, my landlord, who is also a um, uh, commercial um, real estate owner of uh, many properties in uh, Falmouth. He's uh, coincidentally also two of the abutters on the list. So uh, he uh, wrote in a great deal of support and um, chose me uh, instead of other people when it was uh, available um, to sign a lease. Um, just uh, wanted to give you a little introduction. Um, I have been in the restaurant industry for over 20 years. Uh, I have a lot of experience. I have been um, a chef manager of uh, multiple restaurants in the last 15 years as a leader. Um, in the last six years, I've worked for Koji Restaurant Group, which is one of the premier um, places um, groups in Boston. They have some of the uh, very successful, um, uh, well-operated um, uh, establishments. Uh, I've uh, operated in every aspect of the restaurant industry. Um, I myself am TIP certified. Uh, I've begun um, to as well source uh, employees, also TIP certified uh, for the liquor portion. Um, uh, with that, I gave you an example of the most up-to-date uh, food menu and just kind of a, a brief uh, cocktail list as well. So you can kind of gauge um, the direction that we want to uh, go with Romeo's. Uh, Romeo's is going to be a modern American uh, restaurant upscale uh, focusing on social dining. Um, the menu will have a lot of small shareable plates uh, as well as some large formats uh, built to be shared uh, amongst the table. So if you see the large, it's, uh, you know, for two to four people. And then as you come in, everybody kind of has a couple plates. But really um, looking to build a fun, um, upbeat atmosphere with an upscale uh, menu de designation, uh, craft cocktails, a extensive wine list, and just some local craft beers. Um, we do not have uh, draft lines any longer. Um, and if you remember, the property was the old sea salt. Uh, it was left abandoned, and that's why we were able to uh, come in and uh, kind of take over. Thank you. I was wondering where it was. I went looking for that's it. where it was, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, questions from the board? Um, you all had an opportunity to review the application. Any questions? Uh, not really. I'm familiar with the site because I used oh. to uh, dine at the old restaurant. It looks like the same setup. It's, uh, you know, we've um, done some cosmetic, um, <coughs> uh, put in a new bar, uh, kind of made it uh, more operational. We uh, installed a new cooler, um, uh, took out a little bit of space so that the employees have a safer exit as far as, you know, in an emergency or um, just bringing stuff to and fro. Um, you know, we still have the same uh, emergency egress, but um, we also, you know, a nice fresh coat of paint and some uh, new modern art to uh, kind of enhance the experience. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. I don't see anything to, to question. I, don't I didn't see no anything problem. on the application. Uh, I do as well. I would move approval. I'll second Mr. Brown's motion. You public comment? Oh, yes. Right. Okay, we, and we haven't closed the hearing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay. <laughs> Any comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to close I'll the make hearing. A motion to close. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Wolski, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Yep, Scott Price, aye. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously to close the hearing. Any discussion? We do have a motion. Do you want to? I would uh, remake the motion to approve as presented. I'll second, Mr. Brown's remake of the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Zelensky, aye. Muscali, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Great, thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we will move into our third public hearing application from Scott Tynell for recertification of the Division of Marine Fisheries, DMF, 
dives at a land-based upweller site in Rands Canal, floating bags with Rands Canal and a 5.9 acre site in McGansett Harbor for a shellfish aquaculture permit. I will go to um, Mr. Zielinski to read the notice, Mr. Renshaw, and then I will get to the um, applicant. Fountain Select Board will hold a public hearing under MGL 130 and 57 on application of Scott A. Tyrell, P.O. Box 4, North Falmouth, Mass. 02556, for the approval of the recertification of a division of Marine Fisheries DMF dives at the land based upweller site in <coughs> Rands Canal, closed dives <coughs> within Rands Canal, and a 5.9 acre site in Magansett Harbor. The application was received on March 5, 2024 in the Office of the Select Board. Said hearing will be held on Monday, April 1st, 2024 at 6.45 p.m. in the Select Board Meeting Room Town Hall, located at 59 Town Hall Square, Falmouth, Mass. A copy of this application is on file in the Office of the Select Board, Licensing Board. Nancy Taylor, Chair, Edwin P. Zielinski, Vice Chair, Douglas C. Brown, Angela Scott Price, Robert P. Miscali. Thank you. Mr. Renshaw? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just have uh, some uh, over overview summary history, and I'll keep the comments short. Uh, back on May 25th of 2016, the Select Board approved a Division of Marine Fisheries survey of the 5.9 acre site in McGansett Harbor. Following this approval, the town sent a letter to DMF, Division of Marine Fisheries, and on September 13th of 2016, the town received a letter of approval from DMF. Uh, in November of 2020, the Conservation Commission it issued its orders of conditions and subsequently in a butter raised a concern of the project. On March 23rd of 2022, the Mass DEP, Massachusetts Department of Environmental uh, Programs approved the project and superseding order of conditions were issued and the applicant is now awaiting Army Corps of Engineer review and approval after recertification of the dive site results is obtained. Regarding the smaller upweller site in Rands Canal in 2017, the board gave conceptual approval to the Division of Marine Fisheries Survey of the 9,000 square foot site at uh, Bay, Bay Road. And again, November 2020, the Conservation Commission, Commission issued its orders and conditions and a butter raised a concern subsequently. And on March 23, 2022, the applicant received approval from the Mass DEP and a set of superseding orders of conditions was again issued. And the applicant now awaits <laughs> recertification through the select board of the DMF site dive site survey and Army Corps of Engineer approval. Thank you, Mr. Renshaw. Hi, welcome. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. So I'm uh, Alex Tynell, this is Scott my father. Uh, if it's all right, I'd be representing the both of us here, but yeah, we're just trying to get our final certification done so we can get our Army Corps. We've already submitted the application. They're just awaiting these dive results, at which point we should have all of the required signatures to formally apply for uh, an actual aquaculture license beyond just the conditional approval. Questions from the board? I guess I probably have a silly question. When I first read this, I thought there was a typo. Waiting for a recertification of the Division of Marine Fisheries dives at a land-based upweller? How do so you dive at a land-based upweller? <laughs> they won't be actually diving at the upweller, but where the upweller is situated, it does draw water from Rand's Canal where the floating bags will be. Mm -hmm. So they'll be investigating that area where the water will be taken I from. I see. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Have you, uh, if I could, uh, yes. have you been already in business over there? I thought, I thought you were already started, no? no? We started, but we've been waiting to finish the we process. Yeah, we started the application process in 2016, but I because see. of the abutters uh, and wanting to formally address all the concerns, we've been waiting this entire time. So. Wow. Looking forward to hopefully finalizing this. Okay. Any public comment on this application? Sounds like you worked things out with the abutters, then. <laughs> Should we address all the concerns in great detail? Good. <laughs> I is hearing no public comment. I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to close, just to close the hearing. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. All those in favor by, oh, do you want to read? Well, no, we're not ready yet. Um, all those in favor uh, by roll call vote, please. Zelensky, aye. Pascali, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay. The hearing is closed. Discussion amongst the board. 
I would move approval. Yeah. Uh, you want to read? <coughs> we do have a we motion. Do you want to go? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the application from Scott A. Tynell for recertification of the Division of Marine Fisheries dives at a land-based upweller site in Rans Canal, floating bags within Rans Canal. Oops, it just went away. And a 5.9 acre <coughs> site <coughs> in the Gansett Harbor for a shellfish aquaculture permit. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? This was a student of mine, I'm just saying. And a schoolmate It's just really ours. scary <laughs> that he's that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none. All those in favor by roll call, please. Yes, yeah. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. <coughs> Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <coughs> okay, we're going to move into business. Approve a request from Pure Sky Energy for a letter of support for solar ray projects at the Cape Cod Country Club. Mr. Renshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. I believe the applicant uh, has a presentation, so I don't really have any other comments. Uh, the materials are in your packet, and we'll just wait for the applicant to load the presentation. Okay, we've only slated five minutes for this. I did, was not aware that there was an application. Uh, the short part. I mean, presentation. Uh, presentation. We'll be very brief. It's really more okay. in the nature of um, bringing the board up to speed, uh, in particular for those members of the board who may not have been present at our prior presentations. For the record, I'm Matt Terry from the law firm of Ahmed Clower. Uh, <coughs> this evening is Manjur Vahora, who's uh, <coughs> a development associate at Pure Sky Energy, who is the, um, the applicant, the proponent. Um, we'll be applying to the Cape Cod Commission, that's what brings us in front of you this evening, to see if the board is willing to uh, agree to uh, sign a letter of support to the Cape Cod Commission for our project. The, the brief overview, we've been working on this project for over four years um, and have been before um, any number of public boards in the town of Falmouth. As part of that process, there's been a ton of outreach um, we've been before the Planning Board, the Conservation Commission, the Energy Committee. Um, we've been before the Board of Selectmen, a couple of different instances, and we've also been before Town Meeting. Uh, we um, received the approval of Town Meeting for two zoning warrant articles back in 2021. One, to expand the Solar Overlay District to include the Cape Cod Country Club, which is the subject uh, property that we're here to discuss this evening. <coughs> The other warrant article was to give the planning board a little bit more discretion in the um, zoning overlay bylaw uh, portion of the zoning bylaw. So those warrant articles in 2021 passed overwhelmingly uh, with more than 80% of the town meeting member vote. We then were before the board of selectmen to enter into a non-binding memorandum of understanding, which uh, were in your packets. The memorandum of understanding is, again, non-binding, an agreement to agree, essentially, um, where uh, Pure Sky, uh, formerly known as AMP Energy, and the town would work together um, <coughs> to uh, partner, essentially, at this property. The current owner no longer wants to operate uh, as a golf course, uh, and so it was looking for willing buyers. That's where. The applicant stepped in. The memorandum of understanding contemplates that subject to the rest of our permitting, including going through the Cape Cod Commission review process, that Pure Sky would purchase the property, the golf club, which is around 140 acres from the current owner, and would donate the property to the town. A portion would be do donated to the Board of Selectmen. A portion would be donated to the Conservation Commission. Um, and uh, the property would be subject to a ground lease to be held by Pure Sky for the development of three separate ground-mounted solar array projects. Uh, the term of the ground lease to be determined, but the initial term is typically 20 years uh, with options to renew out to as, as much as 45 years. Uh, throughout the, that process, uh, the entire time the town would own the property, it would uh, be uh, receiving rental income. It would also be receiving a payment in lieu of tax income that we would enter into with the town up front. 
all of that to be uh, finalized and approved by the town, the Board of Selectmen, and town meeting at a later date. Uh, we're really beginning the permitting process in earnest, uh, which the first stop uh, is the, the Cape Cod Commission. We've been working with the staff at the commission for a few years now, fine tuning our plan, being responsive to their concerns across a number of different subject areas. So we think we've got a really strong application. In addition to soliciting a letter of support from the Board of Selectmen, as part of your package, we've obtained letters from the Kunamesa Pond Association, the Lockstead Association, the Energy Committee, <coughs> the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce, the board unanimously voted to issue a letter of support. We expect to receive that letter at some time this week, as early uh, potentially as tomorrow. Uh, we've had quite a bit of support from those organizations uh, and other abutters throughout this four-year process. So there's just been a, an amazing amount of dialogue back and forth. So we've got strong support from a number of abutters um, who are either part of the Kunamesa Pond or Lockstead Associations uh, or are standalone ab uh, abutters including folks who live on Theater Drive, which is um, at the bottom uh, southern portion of the um, property in this area here. Some of our, our strongest supporters uh, will directly abut the, the project. So um, again, we're here for a discrete purpose this evening, just with respect to a letter of support to the Cape Cod Commission. We'll be back in the future once we get through the commission process back to the planning board for site plan review, and then working with the board of selectmen, town council, and then ultimately back before town meeting to have the donation of the property, the ground lease, the pilot, the decommissioning agreement, all finalized, uh, legally agreed to by, by both sides and approved. So with that, I'll turn it back over for questions. Any questions from the board? I have one. Mr. Brown? So Initially, uh, when this was proposed, the AMP Energy rep representative who was coming around to meeting with the commi committees met with the Affordable Housing Committee for one, and we were very interested in the short-term goal of using some of the lots that were along the roadway there mm -hmm. for potentially affordable or even just for any housing. And I <coughs> asked that question, and the town manager's office informed me that I think that those are taken out of the current proposal. Is that correct? The short answer to that good question is that in initial outreach, the Kunamesa Pond Association in particular was interested in the applicant pursuing the possibility of affordable housing if it could be incorporated into the project design. Um, that was sort of the only public advocacy around that concept. When we went before the planning board prior to town meeting to get their endorsement of the warrant articles, the um, uh, majority of members of the planning board didn't feel that affordable housing was appropriate, uh, at least as part of this project, mm -hmm. um, given the location relative to infrastructure, access to public transportation, uh, being able to be in a, a, a walkable location. <clears throat> Having said all of that, too, um, one, one piece to keep in mind is that we anticipate that as part of the donation process, the town may be, I can't commit to anything at this stage in the permitting process, but may be in direct control of portions of this property that don't need to be subject to the ground lease. Mm -hmm. So out of the 140 acres, certainly as you can see from the size of the arrays, a significant portion, the vast majority, is going to be subject to the ground lease and will be in Pure Skies sole control for the term of the ground lease. But there may be portions of the property, and we can keep that discussion point in mind in discussions with the Cape Cod Commission, and then when we come back to the, to the town local level to consider affordable housing. Um, right here uh, where I'm circling, um, this is an existing five-bedroom home, which is owned by the owner of the golf course. And this is uh, currently um, part of the, the project area. Um, I should, it's part of the, what will be purchased by Pure Sky if we get to that point. Mm -hmm. you, you'll see it's on the other side. This is the Theater Drive cul-de-sac. So it's on the other side of where the project envelope is going to be. 
we couldn't make any promises relative to, to that building because the Cape Cod Commission, for example, um, may have concerns around stormwater runoff. Kinemessa Pond Association mm -hmm. has been very concerned around stormwater runoff into Round Pond and Kunamesset Pond. Um, but Pure Sky has always been very open to um, you know, uh, responding to concerns, being inventive with respect to this project design. This area up here, which is outside of this yellow area, there's an existing four unit condo, which is not part of the purchase option. The current owner intends to retain those um, condo units and a, a, an adjacent vacant parcel. So um, that's outside of the scope of, um, of our purchase option and therefore our control. Um, but if there are other portions of the property, we're certainly open to, to discussions down the line as this project plan continues to, to evolve. Can, can we look at uh, approving this while also keeping that discussion alive? I thought that's what the email said. This Mr. Johnson, it's John. Go ahead, Peter. Yes, I, I, I believe you can, uh, and I, I would you know, just like to take the opportunity to you know, say publicly here um, to request that we do just that, that we continue the conversation, and, and I understand there's a complex permitting process that the applicant needs to go through with the Cape Cod Commission, um, but there may very well be parcels that are currently planned for the solar array on Boxbury Road that might be more suitable for housing than the parcel that's nestled right in between Round Pond and Kunameset Pond. So if, if we could keep that open for ongoing dialogue, and to be clear, we're a long way from pursuing any affordable housing at this property whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's a sensitive area. The planning board raised some legitimate, you know, board. questions about, um, about the location, proximity to services and infrastructure. Um, but, you know, I think the town wants to be taking a 20 to 50 year long-term view about <coughs> what we might want to do with this property in the long term. So without committing to affordable housing, if we could keep that dialogue open and perhaps tweaking the design just a little bit through the Cape Cod that's, Commission process. That's my point, and I didn't want to hold them up because I think we can keep both things going at the same time. Mr. Zielinski? Uh, um, I guess this question should be, we, we, we would <coughs> certainly require some specificity to the request that we're signing on to, though, for support. So, I mean, what, what, this wouldn't be a support letter, blanket covering anything conceptually down the line that may or may not happen. I mean, we would certainly want to be able to see this thing develop. That, and a lot of times, an approval letter is just that. It's an approval letter that, you know, it's the horse is out of the barn and the horse is out of the barn. Well, this is a letter of support, not an a project of Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. But uh, that happens quite, quite often with support letters from towns. If, if I may, there, you know, there is a nuance there. And it's important to bear in mind that the Cape Cod Commission is not the only re approval that the applicant requires to see this project through to resolution. They need approvals from the town. Mm -hmm. So the town has multiple bites at the apple to negotiate with the applicant Thank between you. now and construction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yep. Yes, Mr. Two Brown. More, two more things, if I could. I noticed you're, uh, you're building a fence around all the arrays and leaving a six inch space at the bottom, which made me think, do you really need the fence? Is it really essential? Because there's a lot of deer and coyotes also that have moved through there for many years, and now they're going to be impeded. Sure, so a couple of points on that. The first is that we've been working <laughs> with town staff for a couple of years now around designing wildlife corridors so that we can connect existing conservation areas. You'll see that the um, Conservation Commission owns these lots here. Uh, up um, ab above the property uh, are, is a significant amount of conserved acreage. And then obviously you've got a, a huge wildlife resource in the Kunamesa and Round Pond areas. Um, so we're looking to make sure that all of those areas are, uh, are connected and remain connected. Um, the fencing is required to maintain site control security, uh, to be able to pr uh, protect the array, um, to make sure that it doesn't become an attractive nuisance so I've worked uh, with uh, AMP, now Pure Sky Solar, on a half dozen projects around the Commonwealth. Um, mo the one that's farther down the line than this and is just about to be turned on is on Katuit Road and Sandwich. 
it's a smaller project, 18 acres with a 10 acre array. But in that instance, all 10 acres of the array are fenced in um, so that uh, you don't have any security concerns, you don't have any risk of folks wandering onto the site. So it's um, standard operating procedure to have uh, the array uh, area itself be secured. In this case, there's a, uh, a significant environmental benefit to that as well, uh, because even though larger uh, animals are prevented from um, moving through those areas, uh, the area within the array is you know, uh, going to be a wildlife um, pollinator meadow underneath all of this acreage that you see. Um, and uh, it's you know, only going to be visited internally once or twice a year. So over the potentially 45 year life, there's going to be very little human footprint array notwithstanding, um, you know, over the course of from one year to the next. So we're doing as much as we can to try to connect these areas. We've also, as part of our um, agreement with the Kunamesa Pond Association, agreed to install uh, a series of trail networks along Kunamesa Pond that connects uh, to the existing trail networks uh, in um, currently conserved acreage so that folks can come down and park at the end of Theater Drive and walk all the way along um, the Kunamesa Pond frontage. That will be totally un uh, uh, um, unblocked. So the, the fencing area is really, as you can see, sort of um, comes along this way. So this uh, area here is a vernal pool. So the fencing will come up here. The rest of this area um, will be open to the public, accessible both to, to wildlife and to, um, to visitors as well. Okay, and one more thing if I could. The yep. last thing and then is- And I, I do have somebody from the public that would like to speak, yes. so. The last thing is, um, I've learned that when we did the solar field at the landfill, the town negotiated the power purchase agreement with Eversource, and as a result of that, we were granted some discount on all of our town electrical uh, rates, and I understand that that goes on permanently because of that. I don't, I don't know all the details, but I, I was told <coughs> that. And I wonder, is there another opportunity here to get a similar type of arrangement for the schools, maybe? They could get a discounted rate because they don't. They didn't participate in that. I can I can speak to that. So um, the there is an opportunity for the town to um, receive renewable energy from a renewable energy generator, limited by the amount of energy that we consume. So in other words, for those accounts that are already receiving a benefit from existing ground mount solar from EDIC, those are already locked up. We have a total of just under 10 megawatts of energy total and um, more than half of that remains that has not been associated with the renewable energy project. So um, this project is far larger than what the town consumes, um, not private residences, just the municipal facilities. But there could potentially, um, I, I would imagine that the, um, the Pure Sky is going to be looking for off takers and the town could be one of those potentially. So that will still be on the table? Thank you. Uh, we do have a public comment. It, it, uh, yes. It's your turn. <coughs> Thank you, Board of Selectmen. Robert Young, town meeting member from Precinct 5, uh, nine years on the Golf Advisory Council, so I'm very familiar with this golf course, as all the golf courses in town. Three years as chairman. <coughs> and I'm a longtime supporter of golf in our community. And before I get into my presentation, I'd like to say, I find it a little contradictory that the gentleman said that the current owner doesn't want to have golf there anymore because I just got an email a few weeks ago that he's encouraging people to join memberships up there. So. I'm here tonight in opposition to the request from Pure Sky Energy for a letter of support from the select board. In October of 2022, the Select Board issued a Memorandum of Understanding with an amendment. I think some of you were on that board. <clears throat> to the previous company involved in this project, Amp Energy. Since that memorandum was issued, the solar project was referred by the Planning Board to the Cape Cod Commission. On June 27, 2023, the Planning Board received a request by Amp Energy to withdraw the application without prejudice. The project was lacking electrical information required by the Cape Cod Commission. Since then, there has not been a referral back to the Cape Cod Commission by the Planning Board. 
Now a new company, Pure Sky Service, is asking for a different letter from the town. This time, for, uh, I call it, as the selectman said, appro approval for the project. The previous developer, Amp Energy, was acquired by two other companies and renamed Pure Sky. Giving out memorandums of agreement and now letters of approval for the same project should be examined carefully by our legal department. There needs to be a certainty so that these documents are not conflicting and they are in the best interest of the town. This project should not receive a letter of approval from selectmen for many reasons. Three of the most glaring are one, the destruction of a 100 year old championship golf course that has held United States Golf Association and Massachusetts State Golf Tournament Championships. Two, the siting of this sixth commercial industrial sized solar array in one section of our town, East Falmouth. I'll just jump over here. Right now we have <coughs> industrial sized solar array at our, at our former uh, dumps facility in East Falmouth, Thomas Landers Road. Canyons Market has a commercial sized facility. Falmouth Ice Arena has a commercial size array. Cape Cod Fairgrounds has a huge industrial size parking, three different arrays. Steamship Authority recently was approved for another, you could call it an industrial size array for their half a mile lot. Now you're gonna put a sixth, sixth array in one part of town, East Falmouth, which is not fair to those residents. The extreme degradation that will occur in the nearby neighborhood and its residents who reside in this part of Hatchville the 44,000 solar panels, their engineer told me that, would be erected, but we render homes in this area with a tremendous loss in value. The Lockstead Group and the Kunamesset Pond Group are on the other side of the pond. They're not gonna be near this. The houses in that Hatchville area are gonna be right there. There are other locations in our town for a solar array as described in the planning tool, siting large scale photovoltaic projects on Cape Cod which is issued by the Cape Cod Commission. Anybody can go online and read that. And this is not the site for it. Cape Cod Country Club is not one of the sites. And I ask you, please do not let her issue a letter of approval for this project. Thank you. Do we? Mr. Finnery? <coughs> Mark Finner in uh, Grand Ave. Um, I was glad to hear that there is a part of this uh, contract or proposed contract where they are gonna allow for the, uh, uh, and obviously take responsibility for the uh, decommission of these things, decommissioning of these things when the time comes because they are filled with uh, rare earth uh, uh, materials and, and heavy metals which are, are highly toxic and polluting, especially to the groundwater. But uh, recently in Texas, there's one of these large uh, solar arrays that was damaged by a heavy hailstorm. And with subsequent um, rainstorms, these things leached these rare earth materials into the ground. And I was just going to suggest that you might want to uh, research that because if the town is actually, in fact, owner of this property, would uh, it become the town's problem, so to speak, if such an event were to happen here? So I just think it's something that you might want to uh, investigate uh, before you get too deeply into this matter. Thank you, Mr. Finnery. Any other comments? Can I speak to a couple of the points that were raised? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the, um, so Pure Sky is uh, AMP Energy. They've rebranded. It's the same management structure. The uh, same president has been there since we started working with them in 2019. Um, so it, there's been no sort of bait and switch. This isn't a new company. It's a new name. Um, the uh, current owner is going to continue to operate this as a golf course until such time as uh, we're through with our permitting process, and Pure Sky has uh, achieved uh, all the approvals it needs to be able to purchase. So the current owner isn't going to stop productive use of this property, but he's indicated that he's not going to continue to operate it as a golf course 
um, for the uh, the long term. So if uh, this project I I isn't approved, it will become something else. It will not be a golf course. And um, I know that uh, that's upsetting to certain folks. Um, and that was certainly an opinion that was raised at town meeting. Uh, but uh, over 85% of town meeting members voted to include uh, this acreage in the solar overlay district. So they understood that um, the, this property's useful life as a golf course is coming to an end, uh, and that as much as it, some folks would like to preserve it as such, it, it's just not going to, to continue as a golf course. So if it's not a solar development, it will be um, housing or some other more intensive use. Uh, I'll, sp I'll let Mr. Vahora speak briefly to the um, uh, materials that are used. The uh, array itself is, is completely uh, devoid of hazardous materials. Uh, uh, the, uh, it's galvanized steel racking, and then the arrays themselves are uh, lithium-based, nothing that poses a hazard to the environment in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'll, I'll let Mr. Vahora go into just a little bit more detail on that point, but uh, obviously that's something that um, is gonna, would be looked at very closely by uh, the Cape Cod Commission and the town as well, uh, but that's been included in all of our application materials for, for quite a while. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, thank you all for having us tonight. Uh, to speak to the materials for the solar arrays that are used, uh, the solar voltaic panels, they are enclosed in a silicon, uh, silicon material to keep the materials within that are, that could be toxic and to the surrounding environment. And for the most part, or not for the most part, but they they are certified panels before they are in our possession <coughs> and before they're put up. And it would take, you know, as the uh, gentleman in the public mentioned, you know, a hailstorm that can get pretty severe in Texas and severe damage to <coughs> crack the panels. And then subsequent rain or other further severe weather to wash out any debris and then uh, the material within could be exposed. Um, in those cases, um, not that, I think, I, I think for the most part we, um, I, uh, sorry, blanking out. That's right. uh, it's, it's a valid concern. But in short, the panels that we uh, procure are certified before they're installed. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? That's an interesting concern that I hadn't really considered before. The environmental concerns, especially I, given its I location. Agree. I agree. The reason so many people are supportive of this because they think it's an environmentally smart plan and it avoids a, a dense housing development, which would be likely detrimental to the area. We do have hailstorms here too, <coughs> maybe not like Texas, but it could happen. We've certainly had crazy <coughs> weather, yeah. for sure, and it gets getting, it's getting crazy. It is. So that, I, I agree that that is a concern. What is the pleasure of the board? Is there more information that we can get on that potential risk and the, the likely measures that may have been taken to ensure that that won't be a problem? <coughs> so from our application materials we're submitting to the commission, and this is consistent with the materials that we've submitted for prior um, uh, projects, uh, like the one that I uh, fully permitted in Sandwich. Um, and uh, the solar modules themselves are silicon cells packaged in an aluminum frame with a glass front and a mat or glass backing, they are fully sealed and contain no hazardous materials. Um, <coughs> so uh, the, the only portion of the project that contains anything that would be considered or defined as a hazardous material um, is uh, within the battery component. So you can see um, these areas here that are, are shaded brown on the site plans um, <coughs> are the, uh, where the batteries are located. These are within 
um, uh, steel container buildings that are on poured concrete. So those are the, out of all of this acreage and all this development, those are the only locations where there'd be anything that would be um, deemed or defined under any state or fe federal regulation as a hazardous material. How would the board like to proceed? Well, we've been supportive of this project and town meeting was supportive of it. Mr. Miscelli? Well, I was just going to say, is, is there a, a time requirement? I mean, I mean, it's languished for a while. Not languished, but you've been working behind the scenes, getting everything done. Is there any need for us to make a decision tonight? <coughs> um, we are intending to reapply to the Cape Cod Commission. We withdrew our application so that we could continue to work with the professional regulatory staff at the commission on providing more information on the project design. Um, so, um, as was noted by, during public comment, we've been back at that process for about six months or so, um, which has put us behind schedule to begin with. So our intent is to reapply to the Cape Cod Commission in the next couple of weeks, and we'd like to be able to uh, offer as part of that application package our letters of support. The town manager would like to make a comment. Madam Chair, if I could just make a suggestion, and, and Peter uh, stated this, and I think it's appropriate at this stage. So if the board desires, we can include in this letter of support uh, asking the Cape Cod Commission to address this concern with regards to the environmental issue that's been What I was going to suggest is, is maybe we could ask Mr. Renshaw to draft a letter in support of the application, highlighting some of the concerns that we've heard here this evening and presented to us at our next meeting in a, in a final form. Or in a, draft form that we can that we could look at how we can approve I think that makes sense um, I have one more public comment <clears throat> um, I just like to stay uh, Mark Finneran Grand Ave um, Mr. Terry's information to the best of my knowledge is incorrect these panels, in fact, behind the silicone front contain um, numerous uh, rare earth elements. Uh, the only one I, can, I know they have a thing called beryllium, which, um, you know, rhymes with uranium. But there is and there are um, hazardous materials inside these things. And, I mean, you can check on the instance that happened in Texas. Like I said, it was within the last couple of months. But um, to say that they are inert is, is totally incorrect unless they've changed in the last short period of time. I know there is, uh, uh, they're working on something that's basically a plant-based um, process that will produce the same thing. But as, as of now, um, they do contain hazardous materials, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that that still remains true. And I certainly think it would warrant checking it out. And also, as I said, if the town owns this property and that were to happen, um, are we on the hook because we own that land? Um, I think that really should be uh, investigated before we, you know, give this thing the thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. May I make a motion? Yes. To, uh, to authorize the town manager to draft a letter uh, in support of the application incorporating some of the concerns that we've heard here this evening with respect to the safety of the materials and, and, and so forth. I'll second Mr. Muscala's motion, Madam Chair. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? I'll just comment that uh, Mr. Young's comment about you know, keeping it as a golf course. I think we talked that out at town meeting, and I think the owners were pretty clear that that's not going to happen. So I don't know if we can really force that issue. I appreciate the comments. But. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none. All those in favor by roll call. Zolinski, aye. Scully, aye. Uh, Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay, the motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move into uh, sign bond 
anticipation note. Mr. Crenshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to ask uh, our finance director to speak uh, in detail to the item, but uh, the purpose of this obviously tonight is to uh, request the select board to sign off on uh, bond anticipation notes for to fund two wastewater projects. This is a temporary borrowing item. Ideally, the temporary borrowing would allow for a reduction in the interest rates or a combination of borrowing with other items to reduce the overall cost of uh, long-term bonding. Ed. Thank you. <coughs> Ed Santiago, Finance Director. Um, as you know, we went out for a short-term bond for the projects that uh, <coughs> Mr. Renshaw uh, mentioned and the lowest net in, uh, net interest uh, cost was 3.291%. Um, that is on the uh, page after the end of the uh, agenda. And uh, that came through um, this past, uh, uh, last week, and uh, it's a very favorable rate uh, given today's climate. And what we'd like to do is when we have a larger borrowing so we can spread uh, a permanent bond offering, we would incorporate this in when we see that the interest rates are um, more favorable than they are today. Questions of either our CFO or Mr. Renshaw? The self explanatory. Yeah. That's a pretty good rate. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, we would ask for a motion to approve and sign the bond anticipation note for wastewater as was presented tonight, and you have documents for signature. Any I'll make that motion to, uh, to support the, 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 the motion by uh, the town manager. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call? Shalinsky, aye. Mscali, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay, the motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move into discuss water conservation incentives and future water conservation recommendations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tonight we have uh, our relatively new water superintendent, Mr. Matt Lannon, has a uh, brief PowerPoint presentation where he's going to go through um, kind of the, the current situation with regards to um, our water usage and then show some perhaps uh, some, some ways that we can incentivize water conservation. Matt? Yes, good evening, everybody. Um, and those in attendance tonight. My name is Matthew Lannon, uh, Falmouth Water Superintendent. Um, tonight I want to discuss some water conservation methods and incentives with you. Um, I was going to start with an April's Fool's joke, but we have time constraints here, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a little background on the Falmouth Water System. Um, as of 20, end of 2023, we have a total customer base of 22,000 uh, water accounts um, that produce revenue for the town. <coughs> Out of the total finished water that was captured um, in, after the completion of the 2023 20, ASR, um, our total figure for water that went through metered uh, finished sources was 1,102,000,000 gallons of water. Um, the 2023 annual statistical report um, produces a number at the end of the report that equates to 59 gallons uh, per person per day in the town of Falmouth. <clears throat> Presently, we have one demand study um, to see our future um, needs for the community. Um, we are waiting on the 10-year federal census before we can get that figure um, to design future water infrastructure. Um, we also previously had a rate study done, um, completed in 2023, um, that put the town of Falmouth in a, uh, a three-tier system that's locked in. The two primary uh, incentives to this, uh, one is it deters uh, our community from uh, exceeding their tier rate for their water usage, and also it um, helps improve um, and assist with the infrastructure um, for water main improvements in the town. Um, our existing water restrictions are currently um, overseen by the Mass Drought Management Task Force, as well as myself and um, those in the water department. Each month the task force evaluates multiple variables that <clears throat> guide the drought restrictions. Um, specifically the condi existing conditions, our long range forecast for rain and previous reporting years that's um, captured since the turn of the, or since the, turn of the, <clears throat> the century. Uh, existing water restriction policy history as we all know 
Um, in 2022, the Town Select Board voted um, to voted a water ban implementation guideline. Um, in 2023, the Select Board um, voted to allow the Water Superintendent um, the authority to implement those restrictions as on a need-by-need -need basis. Um, and those water restrictions are communicated when they are um, established that we go into a, a restriction uh, through our town websites, police and fire, uh, local newspapers, and uh, signboards. Potential water uh, conservation incentives. Um, presently, we have four main appliances internally in, in homes and businesses that um, could be updated and potentially um, in the future um, provide a credit to the customers. Um, the number one um, cause of uh, additional water usage um, that's charged each revenue uh, customer is toilets that exceed um, the old outdated five gallon flush versus the new high efficiencies that have a 1.28 gallon flush. Um, so if you had a family of five, um, presently with a pre-1980s toilet, you're looking at um, 25 gallons of water for, for, for five people in, in one day versus having a 1.28. So, um, you know, washing machines are another one. They have a top loading and a side loading. The top loading washing machines are uh, great for large families, but for smaller families that don't do, do as much laundry, you're using the same amount of water each time on the top loading as you are on the side loading. So the incentive would be to transition people to the side loading and you'd be saving water in the long run. Uh, dishwashers, the same thing. They go from about 15 gallons down to about three and a half for the new updated high efficiency dishwashers. Um, shower heads, um, most people don't prefer them because um, they don't produce as much flow and pressure, um, but they do save a lot of water um, internally. Uh, the average person typically takes about a five minute shower, um, uses between 10 and 25 gallons of water. Um, so it's something to consider in the future. Um, We'd also like to establish um, providing free dye tablets um, at Town Hall and at the DPW um, for people to put in the top of their toilets. Um, this can determine a leak very quickly and um, hopefully turn around um, un unnecessary water usage. Um, we would also like to supply rain barrels um, that att attach to the um, downspouts and you can do hand watering um, around your home. And irrigation sensors. Uh, there are two types right now. Um, one is the classic that if it starts raining and your irrigation is on, it will turn off um, if they're working. Um, the other ones are web-based and will turn off if it's in the duration of time that's going to rain where you live. Um, something to, to consider in the future is um, evaluating the future installation of irrigation systems in both residential and commercials. So whether we want to enact that a new build cannot have an irrigation system period or commercial business. Um, or alternatively limiting new builds to only having consistent odd even restrictions. Um, this also could be implemented by DEP at any point or myself. So water conservation education, I'd like to get that out to our community. Um, and alternative methods than just putting it on their bill every week, every month, every semi-annual. <clears throat> um, through QR coding, um, local newspapers, mailed semi-annual and quarterly billing, social media um, like Instagram and Twitter, and um, hyperlinks. So a, a con a alternative water conservation um, involvement would be to get our community um, involved in uh, water conservation methods. And an example would be to have our students um, and our schools designing a placard that um, could be created for water conservation um, boards to go around town to make sure people know that they should conserve water and only use it when they need to. Um, we'd like to start exhibiting this during the Touch the Truck event in uh, April 21st and having little uh, coloring books and stuff for the children so that they know that they shouldn't just leave their water on. It's, you know, it's a necessity, but use it accordingly. Um, and, and events like the local farmers markets. Any questions? Questions or comments? Mr. Brown? I've been asking for us to have a program to incentivize people to do irrigation wells, especially in sewer areas, mm -hmm. because they're paying a lot of money for their water, their sewer fees, and also the sewer areas are already heavily impacted and the soil needs to be cleaned. Is there some incentive we could provide to uh, offer some assistance with people to do <coughs> irrigation wells that are... Well, the only problem is, is the, 
the source of that water is coming from our sources too. So they're actually just taking their taking our source water and turning it into theirs, but we're not billing it as revenue. Right. So in in a, in a well, I don't know how much they cost, but they aren't cheap. Um, so they're still going to have to pay a lot of money. And if the town were to have an incentive to do that, I don't know if that would be a lot of money to bear on the town. We talked about that before. And so it's a source of revenue that's the concern? Is the right now, all the water for someone that has an irrigation system is going past the meter and we bill them if they're on town water. If well, I'm, we talking, don't I'm talking about them drilling their own well on their own property. Correct, but now we're taking away from the source water that we provide to all the, the, the homes that need potable water to drink. Well, I guess you are, but it's their well, True. their water. But the DEP could come in at any point and say no more outdoor irrigation wells. Well, that's why we want to do these conservation right. measures, right. but at the same time, it should seem to be fair to the right. residents to try to help them with that. It seems like it's a big barrier right. for people because, you know, I don't know, between three and $10,000, I'm, I'm going to say, probably f to do a well. And yeah, I think it would depend on where the topography of where you're located right. you know, before you can get that. But. Any other comments or questions from the board? No, but I like all the, the other ideas. I just wish we could go a little further with that, that one. Well, I think we can keep it that conversation open because I think maybe we, we can look at other ideas and other incentives. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a great place to start. I agree. So thank you very thank much. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Approve Community Preservation Committee request for the approval of Highfield Hall Phase 2 CP fund application. Mr. Renshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Maureen Thomas is here, our CPC coordinator. I'm just going to really quickly introduce as she's getting her presentation loaded. Highfield Hall received about $1.1 million in CP funds back in April of 2023 through town meeting for an exterior rehab and water abatement rehabilitation project. The total construction cost in 22 was $1.39 million, with Highfield Hall providing about $400,000 in match to cover the remaining construction and contract costs. Since 2022, increasing costs brought the total construction cost above the $1.5 million threshold, which, as you know, requires an owner's project manager. Additional funds are now needed to fully fund the owner's project manager and an architect to develop design plans, bid documents, as well as provide construction oversight. Uh, Madam Chair and Select Board, the project's been delayed due to the above circumstances and will be delayed further or not move forward at all if more funding isn't secured. So the purpose of tonight's presentation is to request select board approval for the Hayfield Hall Phase 2 CP fund application for November town meeting. I'll turn it over to Maureen. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking this up this evening because the applications for November town meeting are due on April 10th. So thank you very much. And thank you, Mike. Um, that was actually the majority of what I was going to say, so I can be super quick. Um, the additional funds required include 162000 to cover increased construction costs, $220,000 for increased contractual costs, some of which are being funded through Highfield Hall's matching funds. We have built in a $33,500 contingency for the project for a total CP fund request in this phase two of $415,500 and the construction work that would be completed under this project includes window glazing and weather stripping, roofing, chimney flashing, cladding, gutters and downspouts, fascia and trim, clapboard and sheathing, doors, decking, and painting. So it's pretty full exterior rehabilitation. Questions from the board regarding this application? I think it's a valid request. I mean, it's a community center, and a lot of activities happen there that are town-related. So I think it, I would support it. Would anyone like to make a motion? Is there a written motion? Okay. Yes. Hmm. Not a hearing. <laughs> I would move approval of the request to fund 400 and... 15,000, I think it is. 415,500. Additional funds for the Highfield Hall renovation. A second, Mr. Brown's motion, Madam Chair. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call? Zelensky, aye. 
Mascali, aye. Brown, aye. Scott Price, aye. Taylor, aye. Motion moves forward unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Enjoy the rest yeah. of your night. Okay, we will go to number five, approve Waquite Bay Intermunicipal Agreement. Mr. Renshaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be quick about this. The towns of Falmouth, Mashpee, and Sandwich all share the uh, watershed to Waquite Bay and contribute <coughs> nitrogen load to the Waquite Bay watershed. Waquite Bay is experiencing water quality and other impacts due to excess nitrogen load loading from human sources, which you all or primarily due from septic systems within the three towns. Under contract to Falmouth and Mashpee, uh, the consultant GHD drafted a watershed load allocation approach back in 2020, and it's attached to the IMA, Intermunicipal Agreement. Madam Chair and Select Board, based, upon, based on land area, land use, and natural attenuation factors, the report concluded that the average contributions from each of the towns to the attenuated nitrogen load to Wakoi Bay are Falmouth about 50%, Mashpee about 44% and Sandwich 6%. All three towns declared their intent to apply for watershed permits for their nitrogen sensitive areas, including Wakoi Bay, under the state's watershed permit regulation 314 CMR 21.00, which as you all recall became effective last year. In December of last year, Falmouth submitted notices of intent to the file watershed permit applications for all the coastal ponds. The town's NOI schedule stated that Falmouth would file a watershed permit application for Okoy Bay by January of 2028. For any watershed, the watershed permit regs require that an intermunicipal agreement be executed uh, prior to the application for these watershed permits. This particular IMA accepts the referenced GHD, the consultant's nitrogen load allocation, and provides a framework for cooperation and coordination regarding future watershed planning for Okoy Bay among the three municipalities. At this point, the IMA does not commit the towns, importantly, to any specific watershed plan or financial outlay. The agreement is flexible and may be modified in the future as more specific plans are made by each of the towns to address their portion of the nitrogen load to Wakoi Bay. Madam Chair, um, Amy Lowell, our outstanding wastewater superintendent, is here tonight to answer any specific questions. Um, I just want the board to know that uh, I want to thank Amy. Uh, for participating in, in, I think, all of the meetings. There have been several uh, between the three towns. She did a great job putting this together. Uh, she coordinated with town council, who has also reviewed the IMA and approved it as to form. And I would also note that uh, the towns of Mashpee and Sandwich select boards have all already signed their agreements. So we're the last, uh, the last time to sign. Seems pretty straightforward. Any questions of either the town manager or our wastewater superintendent? No, not by me. No, let's move forward. Okay, I would, in, I would uh, accept a motion. I move uh, approval of the intermunicipal agreement between Falmouth, Sandwich, and Mashpee for the Waquite Bay Nitrogen Load Allocation Intermunicipal Agreement between the three towns. Madam Chair, I'll second Mr. Brown's motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call. Slonsky, aye. Scully, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Okay, moves forward unanimously. Thank you, Amy Lowell, very much. Okay, we're going to move into the consent agenda, and I will go ahead and um, <clears throat> actually, Mr. Brown, would you be willing to read the consent agenda for me? I would. <coughs> Thank you. And if anybody chooses to hold something, please notify me. Otherwise, we'll just we'll we will read each item. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. I'm scrolling through the IMA to get to the consent agenda. All right, I guess I'll just read that. Consent agenda licenses. Application filed by Seafood Sam's Incorporated doing business as Seafood Sam's, located at 356 Palmer <coughs> Avenue, Falmouth, to amend its common victual license and include outdoor picnic tables. Item B, application for a special one day all alcohol liquor license, West Falmouth Library, 575 West Falmouth Highway, June Garden Party, Saturday, June 15th, 2024. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Item C, application for three one day, uh, special one day all alcohol liquor licenses. Falmouth Theater Guild, Highfield Theater, 58 Highfield Drive, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, April 26, 27, and 28, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and May 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2024. Friday and Saturday, 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday, 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Item two under consent agenda is administrative orders. A is request for variance to sign code. 
184-30 promotional special event and 184-32 off-premise signs. Cape Cod Master Gardener Association, May 11th through May 18th, 2024. Item B, approve a grant of license to the Osprey Project to install educational signage on town property at Gov Fuller Field, 744 Main Street. That's it. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Chair. I'll move the consent agenda one and two. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Zelensky, aye. Pascali, aye. aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay. Scott Price, aye. Consent agenda moves unanimously. Okay, we'll move into minutes. Any <coughs> comments about the minutes of the public session, June 5th, 2023, March 11th, 2024? I didn't see anything wrong. No. no. I would move approval. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the public session meetings. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call, please. Zelensky, aye. Mascali, aye. <coughs> Brown, aye. Taylor, aye. Scott Price, aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. Town Manager Supplemental Report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Real quickly, I just wanted to give the board and the community an update. Uh, town Planner just advised me this morning that uh, on April 23rd, the Planning Board will be commencing a short-term rental working group. Uh, the working group will meet on the fourth Tuesday of every month thereafter until further notice. The meetings are scheduled for 4.30 p.m., which is two hours prior to the planning board's uh, regular meeting time and will be recorded by FCTV. I also wanted to provide a brief update concerning the disposition of Falmouth Police Department surplus shotguns. In accordance with the town's newly revised policy for the disposal of surplus firearms, my office has posted to the town manager's webpage the fair market value of the 26 shotguns determined to be surplus. As required by the policy, I'm also reporting to the select board tonight that the fair market value of these surplus weapons is $4,125. Madam Chair, select board, it's my intention that the 26 surplus shotguns that were listed in the February 2024 replacement shotgun vendor invoice as possible trade-ins be destroyed. I'll be recommending that those 26 shotguns be destroyed. The police department is currently making arrangements with the Massachusetts State Police Crime Lab Firearms Identification Section, which uh, the facility is located in Maynard, to schedule the complete destruction of all 26 surplus shotguns. The state police facility is going to document this complete destruction, and there will be no cost to the town of Falmouth for that destruction. Thanks. Very good. And that's the end of my report. Well done, Mr. Renshaw. Okay, we will move on to um, select board reports. Uh, I attended the Recreation Commission Recreation Committee meeting last week. Uh, there was lively discussion about uh, the possibility of imposing fees for sign up for pickleball. Uh, there was no conclusion uh, at that point, so that's still an ongoing issue. Uh, <coughs> dealing with sign up <coughs> issues and no shows and so forth, so it's a continuing discussion there at the Recreation Committee. That's it. Is that it? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Miscali. Mr. Brown. I attended the beach committee, and according to the superintendent's report, the hiring is going along nicely, and she's in even <coughs> better shape than she was at this time last year. <coughs> so it seems like they're on track for a good summer with the beaches. And uh, I did attend the planning board meeting where they discussed the working group, and they did offer to serve, and I said I would check back with my board to see if my board supports that. And from reporting here now, I don't know if there's any official action that's needed. I, I would support Mr. Brown. Second. So it's not really up for a vote. No. I just right. wanted no, to no. let you know that I volunteered to do that in case Thank there was you. any concerns about that. And that's I'd it support that as well. Thank you. Thank you. She's supporting you, Mr. Zelensky. Sure. Not anything. <laughs> Ms. Scott Price? Not today. All right, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, moving forward, doing a better job with these times on these uh, business agenda items because it, I sometimes I, I think I'm cutting them too short and I need to know if someone's doing a presentation or not doing a presentation so I can do a better job assigning the times. 
Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Miscelli, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Madam Chair. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any further discussion amongst the board? Hearing none, all those in favor by roll call. Miscelli, aye. Brown, aye. Taylor, Scott aye. Price, aye. Scott Price, aye. Unanimous, thank you. And we will.